when I look at it, what is happening in the world, and I always allow my higher self to show it to me from a spiritual perspective, not just a global or an economic or a human perspective, but something that says, this is the purpose of this. This is the possible way to use life, to use all of our experiences. And that's what we want to do today. So let's begin by drawing that white light from the cosmos. And as you're drawing it, really focus on the cosmos. And imagine that you are magnetizing the infinite, infinite truth, the infinite uh, wisdom and energy from the cosmos through you, passing through you, through the white light, the highest frequency of radiance, and extend it out across the planet and back into the sky. So draw the white light down, breathe in, draw the white light down, and laser it out. And draw the white light down, and laser it out. Good. Good. And open your eyes. And as you open your eyes, feel that you are expanded, that you that your higher self is is using that light to expand your consciousness away from the limited uh, intellectual mind, the rational mind, but into a holographic consciousness that can see the purpose in everything. Because there is purpose in everything. And so I want to talk this morning a little bit about all of this migration that's going on, all of these refugees uh, who are rushing away from life. They're going from going to. Now you and I, uh, we want to feel and know that um, when we step forward, we can leave what is in the past. We can clear that and release that. And we can go forward into the next octave uh, without being pushed, so to speak. Uh, but here are all these thousands of people who are running for their lives. And what they are running to is not a sense of uh, losing the self, losing their cultures, their religions, um, or losing their lives. They are wanting a new life, wanting to bring the best with them, their families, their traditions. And we must help them. And this is what I love so much about consciousness and about the idea of being an agent of change, is that cultures need to change, societies need to change, languages need to change, and you and I must help our world to embrace through the power of the feminine, through the spiritual, to embrace others. And I hope I'll get a chance to do a video on this sometime in the next two weeks. I'm leaving tomorrow for Greece. But uh, there, it is time for us uh, to realize that we cannot leave the world in the hands of others. That everything that happens to someone outside us is happening to us is a part of our own story. We know that spiritually, how to use it. We may use it specifically through our consciousness, through the exercises in consciousness in which we send light, in which we focus and hold the highest potential for others. Uh, some of you may be contributing monies or food or something to help people, but we need to go beyond that in this planet as humans as uh, recognizing that we are all related to each other, that our genetic pool is very, very small. And so, first of all, let us, as we always do, work on ourselves this morning and look at um, what are we running away from? Because as you know, uh, from the Light Institute work, uh, we don't run away from the past. We turn around and we face the past and we dissolve it so that the energy is free and then that energy comes back to us in pure form and supports the presence and the present and the future. So I want to touch first in each and all of us that conversation of uh, are we um, 
taking refuge? You know, are we uh, seeking something someplace else to get away from something so that we can truly use life? We don't have to get away from something. We can use the power of discernment to say, I'm finished with this, and how do I do that energetically? And then I go on. So if you and I are not refugees, then we have truly something, uh, a point of wisdom, a higher perspective that we can use in the planet. When we talk to our communities, when we talk to our friends, we can get a higher level of awareness about this uh, refugee conversation, life and death and that. So close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath into your body and ask your higher self, that intuitive essence of your soul, to show you some aspect in your that you are running away from something that doesn't suit you, that isn't good for you, that's pushing you into the future, that's pushing you. It might be a relationship. It might be something in your body. It might be an economic thing. It might be something you feel guilty about in your life. Something that you are running away, running for your life, as it were, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And just take a deep breath now. Take the first thing that comes to you. Mm -hmm. Now ask your body where you hold that refugee energy in you, that desperation, that struggle, that fear, all of those compositions of negative energies that block us from our wisdom, block us from purpose. Where is that? Bring your consciousness into that place in your body and ask it what frequency of light it needs. The brightest, powerful light that aligns to exactly that theme. Whatever color that is, laser that into that place in your body and feel as if the brilliance of that color, its speed, its power is washing away the residues. Good. Breathe deeply and feel that opening up in you. And open your eyes. As we were doing that, uh, I had a little flicker, and um, perhaps you will do this exercise in consciousness after our Global Echelon or some other time today, because another thought that's related to refugees is that every single one of us, if we look back far enough in our families, our forefathers, you will find that we carry psychogenetically, not just from this lifetime, and uh, certainly from our other lifetimes, our other incarnations of our own, but also psychogenetically from our parents. Every one of your parents and my parents um, come from a long line of people that moved from this country to that country, this place from that place, from this war, uh, away from the war. Always seeking peace, always seeking a better life, always seeking a future for our children. Um, I flashed on my great, 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 great grandparents uh, moving from uh, many parts of the world, uh, uh, rushing off to survive. Uh, and so uh, that, is, uh, that is something that is deep inside all of us. So it merits doing this exercise several times. 
perhaps, for example, where are you holding in your body that refugee energy, that, that terror um, uh, rushing from one place to another from your forefathers? Think back to where some of them came from. Where did they move? It would always be for survival. And as you know, that's the energy that we want to release on the planet. And so you might say to me, why is this happening? Why are thousands of people rushing out of Africa, rushing out of the Middle East in order to survive? How could that be about you and me? It is about you and me because it is a template. It's showing us that conversation, uh, that conversation uh, looking for something new. You and I, as global agents of change, are calling in the future. We are calling in something better, something higher. So from a spiritual perspective, those beings, those thousands and thousands of people from the different countries, the different religions, from the different uh, tribes, are showing us that it is time on this planet for us to see that we are one soul family. And what happens to them happens to us. And so uh, they are inviting us, again, to participate in that in some way. In any way that comes to us to release the resistance, to not say, oh, but they're Muslim, oh, but they're different than us, but that they are us. And uh, I am quite sure that each and all of us have been every religion, every race, uh, every culture, thousands and thousands and thousands of incarnations into this planet. And so we have reference points, sometimes negative ones, that are part of our justification uh, for imbalance there. The other thing that comes to me that uh, to do a little video on uh, is this conversation that they are offering us. We can't sit back and say, why doesn't our government do this? Uh, what does our government need to do? Or our government is justified. We need to see how to use these experiences in new ways. And uh, that really brings home to me, again, that we are at a time on this planet where that projection onto the authority, whether it's the one who's going to heal your body or the one who's going to give you money, the government in some way, or the government who is going to represent you to the outside world, uh, we have to step up and become the, the teachers of those uh, We have to help them in many ways to make this better. Uh, the government should dole out money to people to house other people. The governments should um, uh, uh, have uh, places where people must, if they come into our countries, must learn our language, must learn our culture. Stuff. We must learn theirs. There's so many ways that we can enhance our own economy. And the one that comes most powerfully to me that I hope each and all of you will talk to everyone else around you and your governments that I'm going to de demand of mine. We need to stop in this whole immigration conversation around the world uh, in, in the United States that here you take someone who was educated or had a particular skill. Maybe it's in building, maybe it's in science, whatever it is. And when they immigrate into another country, we treat them as if they were just peons. They're not allowed to be doctors. They're not allowed to be engineers. They're not allowed to, to do anything that's on the level, on the level of what they did before. The bottom line, and this is where I want to go with you this morning, is that humans need, they necessitate dignity in order to thrive. If you take generations of powerful people, make them into slaves, make them into uh, workers who have no... Uh, ability to use what they have learned in life, their children will be angry. And their children, and this is what we're seeing uh, in places where we've had immigrants for several generations, their children will form clusters against 
uh, that the country in which they live. We need to change so many laws on the planet. And so the exercise that I would like to do uh, right now is that conversation of how do we uh, support the dignity of a person. It's not just, you know, oh, I was a doctor over there and now I can't find work. You know, it, it's not just that, but it is mirroring for them respect, respect for their religions, respect for their humanness. Above all, respect for them as, as humans who have families. I found when I traveled around the world, I used to hold up my children because I knew that when I, and I did go into a lot of places where they didn't like blonde-haired, blue-eyed Americans, and, and I would hold up my children so that they could see, ah, we are the same. We are the same all over this world. And so um, we want to transmit that uh, capacity um, to mirror for somebody that we see them as family, we see them as humans, we see their dignity, we, we honor their dignity. Um, sometimes it's just a smile. When you see a person who looks very different than you in an airport, where I will be in the next few days, you know, I always smile at them to say, I see you. I see you, remember? And uh, it stimulates something. They usually smile back. If they don't, they've been seated anyway. Remember that the only thing that matters is how we live our lives, what it is that we do. And now is the time that our soul friends are suffering in order to teach us in order to awaken us, to order to inspire us. What needs to change and how are we a part of that change? This could be good. This is not just tragic. So, in terms of that dignity, let us use our 70 senses right now and go beyond the I am a this or I do that, that we cloak, that we wrap around ourselves and call, can call that our dignity. But instead, let us find with our 70 senses, what is the, the energy of dignity? Is it peaceful? Is it strong? Is it open? What is it like energetically? So if we have that, then we have something to mirror to others, no matter our circumstances. This is something that, as you know, having just recently lost both of my, my parents, and I was very aware of that um, even when the body doesn't function, as it often doesn't at the, in the last moments of our lives, uh, we want to reflect to others that we see them uh, as uh, strong beings, that we uphold their dignity. Our dignity is beyond our bodies, beyond our station in a, in a culture, beyond all of that. Okay. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. Really breathe deeply so that you're receiving life. Breathe deeply and go inside yourself and ask your body, your higher self, your inner child, all of these essence energies to show you that vibration of dignity inside you. And see what it's like. Does it feel like a strength? Does it feel like an essence? Does it feel secure? Is it a secure, secure point of reference inside you? See for yourself. Now ask your body where it holds that essence, the spin point of that dignity. Where is it? Bring your consciousness to that place and prick open the encapsulation of that essence of your sense of dignity. And allow it to flow through your body 
So that all of your cells in your body realize and align to that dignity. It is your birthright. It comes with the power and the courage of incarnation. Now extend that vibration out from you into the world so that you're sending that reference point of you, your own dignity, radiated out so that anyone who speaks to you, who feels you, who sees you, feels your dignity. The dignity of the true soul. Now, take a deep breath into your body. Gather into your mind's eye all of the refugees at this moment, and in fact, all of the immigrants in all of your countries. Gather them all. It's massive in my mind's eye. Gather them all from even generations past. and ask them the frequency of light they need from you to feel again their dignity and to reflect that into the world so that they can find their place in a new country, in a new society, in a new culture that allows them to express their dignity. What's the color? Draw that color from the cosmos down through the top of your head and laser that out. Laser that out to them and feel them taking it in. The refugees, the immigrants themselves at this moment, the ones that are coming, the ones that have rushed away, the ones that are in boats, the ones who have been for generations, radiate that frequency of light to all of them, as if each ray of light pierces their essence and awakens their dignity and allows them to express it and share it, to hold it in themselves and to see it in everyone else, as do you now. A little bit more of that color. The change colors as you send it. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes. This is what it means to be an agent of change. This is what it means to extend and to use your life, to use the purpose of your lives in a global arena, to be a global echelon. And I profoundly thank each and all of you for being with me and doing these things together and radiate these energies. And I uphold the essence of your dignity. With my great love and my wonderful smiles of Greece, uh, where I go tomorrow, actually I'll be in New York for a day. Uh, and uh, think of you especially, Anne, uh, and bring that health and that smiles and all the um, wisdom that you showed us uh, in your explorations of Greece last year. Uh, you were a great teacher, and uh, as you still are. Uh, so, my love to all of you. I'll be talking to you from Greece uh, next year, uh, next week. Bye.